In the annual Fine Arts football game, Mr. Keating scores a touchdown. To celebrate, he climbs on the uprights and throws his arms in the air above his head, cheering. He then drops the 400 gram ball in a continual celebration. What is the force of the, on the ball just after Mr. Keating releases it from his hand? To solve this problem, we are going to use the equation force equals mass times acceleration. Since we already know that the mass of the football is 400 grams, which is equal to 0.4 kilograms, and that the acceleration due to gravity since we are on Earth is 9.81 meters per second, we are able to solve for the force in newtons right after Mr. Keating releases the ball. Plugging in the correct values for mass and acceleration, we can solve for force. Putting F equal to 0.4 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second and multiplying those two values together, we get the force is equal to approximately 3.9 newtons. Thus, the football has a force of 3.9 newtons acting on it right after its release. Let's say Mr. Keating released the ball 5.6 meters above the ground. How much momentum does the ball have right before it hits the ground? Using the equation momentum equals mass times velocity, we can solve for the momentum. But first, we need to solve for the velocity using the kinematic equation velocity squared equals initial velocity squared plus 2 times acceleration times displacement. Plugging in the correct values for initial velocity, acceleration, and displacement, we can solve for the, vo the velocity. So v squared equals 0, the initial velocity, plus 2 times the acceleration 9.81 meters per second squared times the displacement 5.6 meters. So v squared equals 109.872 meters per second. Taking the square root of both sides, we can solve for velocity equaling 10.5 meters per second. Now that we've calculated velocity, we can solve for momentum. P equals m times v. Plugging in the correct values for velocity and mass, P equals mass 0.4 kilograms times velocity 10.5 meters per second, giving a total momentum of approximately 4.2 kilogram meters per second. The unusual ball does not bounce back into the air, but instead burrows and sticks in the, gr in the soft ground 0.3 meters deep. What is the momentum of the ball now? Using the conservation of momentum, we can see that the final momentum should equal the initial momentum of 4.2 kilogram meters per second. But how is the momentum conserved in an inelastic collision? You see there is momentum in the moving ball due to its mass and velocity. But when the ball sticks, even though there is still mass, the velocity is zero, concluding to no momentum. So where does the momentum go? The momentum is transferred from the ball into the deformation of the Earth and the Earth itself. But when such a little mass meets such a great mass, there is no noticeable change. But the momentum is conserved. But what is the total change in energy that is not conserved now that the ball is in the ground? Using the following equation, we see that the total potential energy plus the total kinetic energy equals the total energy overall and the total energy is equal to the work that is not conserved. To solve for total energy though, first we must solve for the potential and kinetic energy of the ball. Potential energy is calculated as mass times gravity times height. Total or delta potential energy is equal to final potential energy minus initial potential energy. By using the ground as a reference point of 0 meters, we can see that the initial height of the ball is 5.6 meters. Also, the initial velocity is 10.5 meters per second as we previously calculated. Since the ball comes to rest in the ground, its final velocity is equal to 0 meters per second and the height is negative 0.3 meters or the distance it's stuck into the ground.
To solve for initial potential energy, we plug in the correct values for mass, gravity, and height. Thus, initial potential energy is equal to 0.4 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared times 5.6 meters. Initial potential energy then is calculated to be 21.9744 joules. Then we solve for final potential energy using the same values but putting in negative 0.3 meters for the height. By multiplying 0.4 kilograms by 9.81 meters per second squared by negative 0.3 meters, we get an initial we get a final potential energy value of negative 1.1772 joules. Now that we have both final potential energy and initial potential energy, we can solve for the total or delta potential energy. Plugging in our calculated values for, to for final and initial potential energy, we get that delta potential energy is equal to 21.9744 joules by negative 1.1744 joules. Thus, total potential energy is equal to 23.1516 joules. Next, to solve for total kinetic energy, we use the kinematic equation 1 half mass by final velocity squared minus 1 half the mass times velocity initial squared. Plugging in the correct values for mass and velocity, final and initial, we can solve for delta kinetic energy. Delta kinetic energy is equal to 1 half 0.4 kilograms by zero, our final velocity, minus one half, 0.4 kilograms by 10.5 meters per second squared, our initial velocity. We cross out the first value since it is equal to zero, winding up with negative one half times 0.4 kilograms by 110.25 meters per second. Finally, we get a total kinetic energy equal to negative 22.05 joules. Now that we have values for both potential and kinetic energy, we can solve for total energy, which is equal to the non-conservative work. Plugging in our calculated values for potential and kinetic energy, we can solve for the total energy. Total energy is approximately equal to negative 1.1 joules.